Generational change. What's Jewish life like in Germany? In the interview, the president of the Central Council of Jews in Germany, Dieter Graumann. Mr. Graumann, you're the new chairman of the Central Council of Jews in Germany. Born in Israel, your first name's Dieter. That's extraordinary. It's not extraordinary to me, but the story goes that I used to be called David. I was due to start school here in Germany, and my parents put me in front of a mirror and said, David, now your name is Dieter. My parents had experienced the Holocaust. They were, like every fellow sufferer, badly traumatized by the Holocaust. For them, it was crucial that I shouldn't be outed as a Jewish child. Things were different then. Biblical names are fashionable now. David, Aaron, Miriam and Sarah are all common. When I was small, it was still unusual. Did you experience anti-Semitism as a child in Germany? No, I was lucky. I never experienced anti-Semitism during my time at school. Luckily, I was a good student. Good students always get along with their teachers because teachers think it's to their credit if the students are good. Sometimes that's true, but no one ever said anything. Of course, at that time, the Jewish community was shaped by the memories, experiences of many survivors who'd been through terrible things, surviving concentration camps. Of course, that shaped the self-conception of all your predecessors. Do these memories affect you in office as the new chairman? Not only my office, but my soul too. These things are burned into my soul. You never shake it off. I grew up with stories of the Holocaust almost in the same way others grew up with Grimm's fairy tales. Parents from the Holocaust generation had two different approaches. The first kind never mentioned it to their children. Others talked a lot about it. My parents discussed it from early on, in retrospect, perhaps too early. I grew up with these stories from a very early age. As a Jew in Germany, you'll always have to live with the Holocaust. Are memories of it the main influence on the way you view your role in office? No, but of course it's very important. There's no closing communique and no file closed stamp. It'll remain important to us Jews in general and not only for Germany. It's of huge relevance that six million of us were murdered simply for being Jewish. Jews will always remember. Even today, we recall events from 3,000 years ago. We have a long memory. How can we forget just 70 years ago, 6 million Jews were murdered? No, we'll never forget. But I urge people not only to focus on that, but to sit up and try to understand it. It shouldn't be what defines our identity. Many Jews who stayed here or returned after the war asked, how can we still live in Germany? Do you ever ask yourself that? Absolutely not. When I was young, the question came up often. Today, Jewish life has accepted all over the world, especially in Israel. In Israel, people appreciate Germany as one of its best friends in the world, but certainly Europe. I don't ask the question, not least since I made the conscious decision to live in Germany. I feel at home here. You were born after the war. You're a new generation chairing the Central Council of Jews in Germany. Is this a turning point? Yes, the media are perhaps exaggerating it a little. They say it's the first time someone born after the Shoah has taken that office. But you know, 65 years after the Shoah, it's simply a numerical inevitability. For me, it's more a mathematical fact than a moral one. As I've said, I haven't ticked the Shoah off. But the difference now is that I'm speaking from second-hand experience, and my predecessors were there. In that respect, of course it's a change. 
alle ihre Vorgänger All of your predecessors, from Heinz Galinsky to Ignaz Bubis, right up to Charlotte Knobloch, your direct predecessor, have been confronted by a certain level of expectation in Germany. They've been portrayed as moral authorities in German society, sometimes against their own wishes. Do you think you'll encounter that? I think that's how the Central Council is identified, but no one on the Central Council has taken that upon themselves. None of us has ever said we want to become a moral authority in Germany. That's a role given us by the media. The implication is that we speak for six million murdered people, perhaps implicitly. It's a bit like that. Is there any everyday anti-Semitism, perhaps not always visible to non-Jews, or is there none of that? I'm sure there is. When you look at the latest surveys, there's more than we thought before, more than I would have believed. But I must say, everyone has a different experience. Personally, I've not encountered it. Do you sometimes get the impression that strong criticism of Israel here is just a veiled form of anti-Semitism? Yes, I'm sure that does happen. It's okay to be critical of Israel or of current Israeli policy. Current Israeli politics are criticized loudest in Israel itself. Israel is a very vibrant democracy, the only one in the entire region. That's given far too little recognition and respect. But that's why it's okay to criticize Israeli politics. To do so very strongly is absolutely legitimate. But you're talking about something else when criticism is used as a vehicle for peddling the old kind of anti-Semitism, an ersatz Semitism where people say Israel but mean Jews. That does exist too. Do you ever get annoyed at the criticism of Israel? Objective criticism of Israel doesn't bother me. Sometimes I think Israel bashing has just become fashionable, and if you look at the popularity rankings of countries, Israel is often right down between Iran and North Korea. I can't understand that. But normal criticism doesn't annoy me. The boundaries only crossed when Israel is generally demonized, when people deny Israel's right to exist, generalize about Jews or make terrible comparisons between what the Israelis are doing today and what the Nazis did. That's crossing the red line well into anti-Semitic territory, in my view. Mr. Grauman, the Jewish community, which for a long time numbered about 40,000 people, has probably tripled over the last 20 years. There are significant problems with the immigration of Eastern European Jews. Is there a successful integration of the many recent Jewish immigrants in the community in Germany? I would change the emphasis. It's not a problem, it's an opportunity. There have been huge achievements in integration. Look at the debate raging in Germany, fueled by Mr. Tsaratin and others. We've been integrating for 20 years, and how? 10% has had to integrate 90%. It's a real semantic novelty. You don't find it every day. Though not complete, we're doing very well. We're growing together into an entirely new community. We're building on Germany's new plural Jewishness. It's something new. We don't have to reinvent Jewishness, but we have to rediscover ourselves and grow back together. There's a new kind of Jewish plurality emerging that hasn't been seen for decades. For us, it's a source of huge strength and enrichment. Mr. Grauman, thanks for talking to us.